helping out Gania here today. Welcome everybody to Uncle Freddie Dowling and Justine Ambrosia's Indigenous Song and Workshop um, and Story Workshop. Um, just a bit of housekeeping to let you know the um, the nearest toilets. They're not very near. Uh, <laughs> there's um, some at the showgrounds, which is that way. Um, probably the nearest ones this way would be the railway hotel over the railway line or the King George Gardens. So that's the nearest ones we have. Uncle Freddie is going to entertain you with Indigenous stories and uh, song and then Justine's going to take you for a walk along the fabulous Bulawa Trail. Um, the concert tonight at the Vine Hotel is sold out, which is wonderful news. Um, if anyone's looking for somewhere for lunch after here, I can personally recommend Intermeso at Wangaratta Performing Arts Centre. That's about the closest one I know of. Um, and then you're not very far from the Wangaratta Library where you could go and check out Gania's Always Was, Always Will Be Bangarang Country Art Exhibition, which is a fabulous uh, mixed media art exhibition celebrating Bangarang culture and history. Um, and we'd also like to invite everybody to join us at 4 pm today at the Elders Rock in Apex Park for the grand opening of the giant rainbow serpent ground drawing and show and tell about all the workshops. There'll also be a world premiere of um, the Wangaratta school children have been working on a song based on um, Uncle Freddie's Dreamtime stories um, and there'll be a performance of that song at 4pm at the Elders Rock. So that's a fabulous thing to... Um, where, where is the Elders Rock, sorry? So Apex Park, um, which, just, Justine? Just over the stock bridge, so on the right-hand side. Yeah, so from Cafe Faithful Street, Street yeah. directly opposite the river. Okay, you can't, you won't there. miss it. It's got yeah, a yeah. lot of um, bunting okay. and... Okay. Yeah. Or for the locals, that's where Yogi Bear lives. The oh, Yogi yeah, Bear. Of course. The Seesaw oh, is oh, Apex oh, Park. <laughs> Okay, I have great pleasure in introducing your presenter today, Uncle Freddie Dowling, Bangarang elder and great nephew of Auntie Mary Millowa. Uncle Freddie is an author, singer-songwriter, musician, artist, activist and champion of the Bangarang people. Uncle Freddie has been instrumental in keeping Bangarang history and culture alive and fighting current day injustices on behalf of his people. He is a champion of truth and justice and an inspiration to all. Um, Uncle Freddie is going to um, relate some of the Bangarang Dreamtime stories to you today and also um, sing you songs um, about his fam family history and the um, Bangarang lands. And um, Justine Ambrosia is the cultural I've lost my notes <laughs> is the cultural development officer for the rural city of Wangaratta. Um, Justine has a passion for preserving cultural history and promoting it and was instrumental in the creation of the Bulawa Trail which you will have the pleasure of exploring with her today. Um, she worked very closely with, with Uncle Freddie and the Durawa, Durawara Indigenous Network to create a magical tribute to the Bangarang. So I don't really have to welcome you here, but uh, it's just part of the way. All right then. Uh, <coughs> first of all, I suppose, uh, tell a story about Wangaratta 
became Wangaratta. While we're here by the river, now thousands of years ago, has anyone heard this story? Oh, you haven't heard it. You haven't heard it. No, I want you to tell it. Well, the ones that haven't heard it, I'll tell you. Did you want? Anyway, thousands of years ago, there was a, a young fellow and his wife coming up the river here in a canoe. And uh, his name was Wamboyne, which means a great kangaroo. And her name was Bubala, the, the black faced cuckoo shrike, if anyone knows what that is. And, uh, and she was paddling at the back, and he was, he was up the front looking where they were going. Anyway, when they got up here further, <coughs> they kept going up here, and they uh, got to the sandbar where the two rivers meet. You see that sandbar where the two rivers meet? Anyway, and he, he said to Bubala, we'll go with you. Then we stop paddling. So she stopped and the canoe just beached herself up on the sand. And he's looking around and going, geez, oh, I see ya. Anyway, and then he looked and he saw a long neck cormorant, which is Wangaratta, in the water. And it came up and it had a great big fish in its mouth. And it's, and he's, it's only got a neck about as thick as your finger. And he, he's looking and he's going, How's he going to swallow that? And he, like, the, the corn was swimming around, shaking his head, trying to get this fish down, because he had to turn it round frontwards to go down, because otherwise the spotless fins would all get caught in the throat. So anyway, he eventually got it down, but they'll laugh, and I'll, him and he misses the laugh, and he heads off the other and go, yeah, no, geez. And then down he went looking for another fish. Anyway, so they walked up the bank on the high side, and then up about where the Roundabout is now. They look down at the where the rivers join. They went, oh, this is beautiful here, eh? Kalidia. And uh, he put his arm around her. And he said, "We'll call this place Wangaratta because we had a happy start with watching that bird." He said, "So we'll call it Wangaratta after that bird." And he said, "So we'll build a gun out here and we we'll live here, and that's how the country we call Wangaratta." But, Nobody else do that. <laughs> I need them to. But that story's been handed down for thousands of years. Anyway, another one. Uh, <coughs> the kangaroo. You, you know the story of how the animals got their pouches? I suppose a few of you have. Well, one day, kangaroo, this is kangaroo, she's hopping down the, the river down here to get a drink. Not as steep a bank as this down further. Anyway, she go down to get a drink. And as she goes along, there's an old wombat lying there on the side of the track. And she said, uh, she's carrying her baby in her arms. And she said, uh, you don't look too good, old wombat. Are you all right? And he said, no. Nah. He said, I've been laying here in the sun for hours. He said, uh, I'm getting real bad, weak and feeble. And she said, well, how yeah, can I help you? And he said, just give me a drink of water if you can. She said, okay. So she looks down at the baby and she says, well, here I'm going to get him water with the baby. So he hops over, she hops over this hollow tree over there and she says, uh, hey, Mrs. Possum. And Mrs. Possum, yeah, what do you want? She says, old Wombat's sick down the track here and I've got to give him a drink of water and I can't do that and hold me baby too. Can you mind him? She said, yeah, well, I'll mind your baby. So she come down and took the baby up to the, the, the babies up the tree. And uh, Mrs. Kangaroo hopped down to the river, got a bit of bark off a paper bark tree, made a little cup out of it, got the water. She hopped back to the old wombat. She said, uh, we've got the water here. And he says, she said, sit up and I'll give it to you. He said, I can't sit up, I'm too weak. She said, oh, well, I can't hold you up and push you up and give you a drink too, what am I going to do? So she put the water down, goes back over to Mrs. Possum, Mrs. Possum, I need your help. Why? Because I can't lift him up and give him a drink at the same time. So what can we do with the babies? Because there's eagles and dingoes getting around and they're all hungry. So we'll take them over to Mrs. Bandicoot over there in the hollow log. So they took the kids over to the Bandicoot she said, yeah, I'll look after them, after they told the story. She said, I'll look after them, you go and do what you're going to do. So they go back to the old wombat, 
And Mrs. Kangaroo, because she's bigger and stronger, she gets him, <laughs> you know, I'm a little wombat, and she picks him Thanks. up. And, and, uh, and uh, Mrs. Possum pours the water 